Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Oscar Mikey and today I want to show you a game called Blood Running. You know, ever since Zero Sievert came on the scene, there's been a lot of similar games popping up trying to get noticed in that sort of top-down 360 degree extraction shooter market. Blood Running is the latest game to try this style out and it's due to come out on Steam sometime this year. It's meant to be a post-apocalypse extraction shooter with kind of a cyberpunk inspiration. Right off the bat, I have to say how much I like the art direction of this. It's pixelated, but they're going for a slightly more like anatomically correct characters and slightly more detailed assets than something like Zero Sievert, for example. Characters look much more humanoid, and some elements of the map have a little bit more detail in them. The player model and the NPCs remind me a little bit of Hell is Others, which is another top-down 360-degree extraction shooter. So yeah, if you were to take the art style from Hell is Others and just kind of mash it with the cyberpunk aesthetic, that's kind of that's kind of how I describe this, and I actually really like it. There's a lot of bright colors. I like the character design and the item assets like food and craftables. And there was only one map playable for me in the demo, but that looked pretty good too. It's a desert map called Badlands, and it's kind of barren, but NPCs can be found wandering around little campsites which have a bunch of detail in them and buildings and interior spaces look pretty cool too. There's a couple of unique areas that you can find and they have very different looks to them, but they're all very interesting and they help to kind of break up any kind of monotony that you might feel when you're wandering around this map for hours on end. The whole gameplay loop shouldn't be new to anybody who's played Zero Sievert or any extraction shooter for that matter by now. You have a persistent character with a stash that holds all your weapons, foods, meds, items, etc. And you can do quests for a bunch of the NPCs in the hub area to further the story and gain rewards. So when you hit tab, you'll see a lot of familiar information you've seen in other games like Zero Sievert. There's tabs for inventory, quests, skills, and a map when you're in raid. The inventory tab shows you all the standard loot, gear, and health related stuff. You can carry two weapons, a backpack, and four armor pieces, a helmet, a chest rig, pants, and boots. You can also see your carry capacity, money, health, stamina, energy, hydration, hunger, and intoxication, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's how drunk you are. And then there's also an XP meter to keep track of your progress. This is your stash, this is your hideout, and you can put all kinds of modules in here. I haven't really played around a whole lot with the module crafting because a lot of the features are locked out for the demo. Go in here and you got like furniture and stuff. You can down here where you can actually click and just place things. Got some like banners that we can just hang on the walls. Pretty cool. And you can change like the lighting color too. Pretty sweet. And there are some other buttons up here. Again, I didn't really play around with this too much, but you there is uh, an option to personalize it a little bit. This is where you access your stash. So you come in here, you can upgrade it to have multiple uh, quote unquote pages to like build your stash bigger. And you can see I've, all, I've got all kinds of stuff. This is my weapons page and then everything else just kind of like miscellaneous. I've got a bunch of junk in here. In terms of items, like in-game items and craftables and stuff, it's very similar to Zero Seaver. Like I've got a CPU here. It's worth quite a bit actually. We've got stims. There's all kinds of stims that can do different things. You've got bottles of water. You've got med kits, bandages, and a bunch of other things. Like there's wires and batteries and uh, screws and tape and nuts and all that kind of stuff. Like you've all seen this before, right? One thing that's different about this game is it does give you four different armor pieces that you can wear at once. So you've got a helmet, a chest piece, some pants, and some boots. You've got two weapon slots, and then you have your inventory over here. You've got your carry capacity and your money. I've been playing the game for a little bit, so I have a little bit of uh, like pimped up gear. This is this is like some good stuff that I bought and uh, or found and like killed somebody for. <laughs> and then there's a few traders. This guy over here is the guy you need to see if you want to craft stuff or build modules for your uh, vault or your hideout. And then if we come down here, we've got two traders here. This is where you can like find a lot of food. Cat is the bartender and she will give you like booze and stuff. She's got a couple of food items, but this is where you go if you want to get alcohol, basically. <laughs> She also gives you quests if you want those. And then we come over here to Gyro and you can buy all kinds of food items from this guy. So he's got like bowl of ramen, <laughs> uh, shoyu ramen, I've never heard of that before, rice, you know, all kinds of stuff to fill up your thirst and your hunger. There's a bunch of other NPCs kind of spread out around the area. You'll have to explore a little bit to find them. But these three here, um, this guy, I forget his name, Atlas. He will give you some quests. Kane is the arms dealer, basically. He'll sell you guns and armor. There's a few tabs you can click through. He's got attachments as well and a backpack he's, he can sell you. And Acadia is the person you talk to. She can give you some quests, but she is how you get into the maps. Actually, you say, I want to leave and then you can pick your map. So you spawn in and it works pretty much just like any other extraction shooter. You go in and you try to loot stuff, kill things, like finish your quests and uh, extract. So actually, if we go into our tab menu, you go to our map. And this is where we are down here. And these two circles are the extraction points. They're kind of like portals that you have to stand in for a few seconds for them to work. 
But yeah, that's where you want to go when you're ready to leave. But until then, you can just wander around, look for NPCs, uh, shoot stuff, and get loot. Those guys over there, they're just kind of like bandit characters. And then there's also the Bone Boys. I forget what they're called, actually. Ow, fuck, he shot me with a sniper rifle. 50%. He took away 50 health and we're bleeding. <laughs> Shit. We'll go in here and we'll use a bandage. Stop the bleed. A little bleed icon shows up there next to our health bar if we're bleeding. And we'll use a health kit. And another feature that this game kind of borrows from Zero Sievert is wounds. So at the moment, it doesn't really show you the wounds that you have. This is the icon for wounds. A little skull up here, and it goes up to 50, I believe. But your health bar doesn't actually like show you at a glance how many wounds you have. It just says 100%. You actually have to hover over it to see how much health you have, how much like how much your total health pool has gone down with your wounds. But it looks like it's just basic math. So we got 11 wounds and our health is now 89. So that's just, a, you know, 100 minus 11 is 89. Pretty straightforward. The sniper rifle is without a doubt one of the best guns in the game. Um, I get killed by people with sniper rifles all the time. I do bring in my own to uh, to use, you know, every once in a while. If I see some, I feel like engaging from a distance, I can bring that in. Where are you going? Oh. These guys, these are the bone guys. What are they called? Bone Walker. Yeah, so these guys have pretty good armor. That's what this helmet is from, the Bone Walker Champion. <laughs> Weapons do have durability. I haven't run into any issues with re weapon durability yet. Like I haven't done any, I haven't seen any jams or anything or anything like that. Oh, this guy, he's got like, he's got a shotgun. Oh, okay. Our health is really like, look at our health. We're already down to like 40 health. Was that like 40? Jesus. And we got 10 wounds. Yeah, this is one of the bone uh, the Bone Walker camps. <laughs> Fuck that guy up. Whoa. Uh. Oh, there's a Bone Walker champion. Dude, die. There we go. He is going to be dangerous. Oh. Oh, no. We got him. We hit him a bunch of times. Shoot. Ah, oh, damn it. Yes, we got them. We leveled up too. Nice. So these guys, the Bonewalker champions, they're um, they're pretty strong. Their armor is very good, and you'll see you'll see the Reavers and the Nomads fighting the Bonewalkers every once in a while. They're not they're not friends. <laughs> they don't like each other. And then there are some crates like in the camps that you can loot. These things here. We got a couple actually, different colors. Boom! Open it up. We got like a circuit board. Some gears. You can have some high value loot. These, um, like cups and teapots and stuff, these are actually really high value. I think one of the things that I like most about this game is the secret areas that you can. There's one right here. There's a secret areas in this game that you can find and enter. And there's they look a lot different than like the the outside map. And they're pretty cool. I like that they're dotted around and you can find them every once in a while. Let's just go into this one. Use this one as an example. So this is like in an underground bunker. And there can be loot in these places. You just wander around and take a look. Yeah, here's a chest right here. Boom. It's got a few things in it. And to get out, we need to go into the map. We need to look for a portal. And maybe we'll just go down there. You can mark on the map just by right clicking. Right click again and get rid of it. And it shows up as a little arrow right there. If you let the NPCs get really close, then they will mess you up. They're, they're oh, they're pretty, they're pretty strong. They're pretty accurate. Their weapons do a lot of damage. Ooh, we leveled up. Sweet. Another another Boner Boys camp. <laughs> oh, the extract is right here. Oh my god, it's a freaking bloodbath. Ah, I just want to get out, please. No. Back. Back. There's so many people. Let me out. Let me out of here. Oh god. I think it should do it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, we got a bunch of kills. That's awesome. And yeah, that's the basic gameplay loop of the game, guys. You go back to your stash, you drop off your gear, you sell stuff for money, buy new gear, get better stuff, and go back out and do it all over again. 
This game is very difficult, okay? Like, I do pretty well in Zero Secret, I think, but this game kicks my ass on the regular. I think there probably needs to be a little bit of a balance change made here to make enemies a little bit more forgiving, because they have really good accuracy and they can rip you to pieces pretty fast. There were a handful of weapons in the build that I played. I wasn't able to mod them, so they were all stock and pretty trash. You can buy an assault rifle with a red dot from Kane, who's like the arms dealer NPC. And that was the best one I tried, really. But the sniper rifle is also pretty good, and it works the same way it does in Zero Seaver. You can also get different ammo types for each caliber, and it breaks down into armor penetration versus flesh damage, just like it does in pretty much all the other games. But there was one actually really unique round that I was able to use uh, in the demo. It was the 762 by 45 I think that might be supposed to be 54 <laughs> uh, C round for the sniper rifle. This thing actually multiplies the sniper's damage by 500%, but it decreases the accuracy by 2000%. Kind of insane, but believe it or not, it's actually pretty good if you use it right. And that's pretty much it for Blood Running, guys. I really like the aesthetic of this game and the cyberpunk post-apocalypse uh, art style. The gameplay is fun and rewarding, just like a lot of other extraction shooters. But just a heads up, there are some balance issues with combat and those crashes from the quest menu is a problem too. One of the things that I really love about this game is that they did put those secret areas in the map. It really does help to break up the monotony of treading over the same ground over and over and over again by putting little secrets for you to find and like making them so di like they're actually really different. Some of these areas have like wildly different environments and enemies to uh, run into in them, and it really does help keep the map feeling fresh. I hope the other maps in the game will be like this too, because finding these secret areas were some of my most like memorable moments when I was playing the demo. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like on it for me. It really helps with growing the channel and appeasing the algorithm gods. And if you're new to the channel, maybe consider getting subscribed so you don't miss any future content like this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate you, and I'll talk to you in the next video.